welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and I'm honored to speak with Ryan Jones, a street photographer based right now out of Brooklyn, New York. Now, Ryan and I just met on Facebook, to be honest with you, because he would posted something that really caught my eye, and it was his street photography. And I said, I have to talk to this guy because he's just got a, a unique view on life. Um, Ryan is like me, from the West Coast, and from Fresno, California, but he's now in New York. So welcome, Ryan. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Aishu. So let's begin by asking you this question, man. I really am curious. Is what brought you from the West Coast to East Coast? Um, I, uh, I had a corporate job for a few years uh, between 2005, 2008, and it's where I, I realized that I, I wasn't supposed to be in an office every day. Um, it was a big company. I was a training manager or a corporate trainer, and um, it just it wasn't my thing. And so, about halfway through, I was shooting a few weddings on the side, and this was when MySpace was still a thing. So people were noticing my work um, on MySpace, and uh, after a, a particularly draining uh, training session, I uh, was like, you know what? this isn't for me. So I quit my job. <laughs> I moved from LA to Fresno and I started my uh, photography business, um, which I ran in Fresno for about four years. Um, started as a wedding photography, um, kind of evolved into portraits and music and commercial. And um, I, I took a foundation workshop in 2010. Oh, great. Um, and that was a, a really eye-opening experience for me. It kind of showed me a different side of of what photography can do in terms of visual communication, and uh, it it really just changed how I approach photography and how I see the world. And that's when I started shooting um, street photography because it was in such direct opposition to weddings. You know, weddings you're paid to have access. You're there for a certain time. You show up. You do your work you leave and then you deliver your images and like it was it's very product driven mm -hmm. um you know the, the finished product is what you're creating for and um street photography was so drastically different because access was an entirely different notion um like you had to you had to gain access and you had to put yourself in someone else's space and either make it known to them that you were there or not make it known to them that they were there and uh, and that was just it was a it was a nice challenge coming off of a, a few really tough years of wedding photography where I just felt like I was kind of shooting the same thing over and over again. Indeed, indeed. Um, so yeah, after a few years of that, I, I got the job at well, not the job. I, I was able to freelance for a, about a year with the Fresno Bee, and then um, I was. It's like I, I need another change and so I sold my car and left my studio and left my gallery and um, moved to the East Coast and have been here for exactly two years. Okay, oh, wow. And you're now essentially still a street photographer but only in New York? No, I, I travel quite a bit. Um, I actually haven't done as much street out here as I initially anticipated. Um, I've moved more into thinking um, narrative with narrative and with arc and with more essay driven, uh, story driven type work. Um, so, you know, I still love making street photographs, but I'm, I think I'm now in the place where I want to string a number of images together as opposed to just making interesting single frame stories, you know, for just one particular picture. Um, so, uh, you froze. Oh, there you are. Um, and, and you you you'd mentioning before we started recording um, that you've you, obviously you've, you're now producing work as a commercial photographer as well. What does that involve exactly? What does that mean? Um, yeah, so I've been lucky enough to have uh, commercial clients that value the story element of my work. So um, as opposed to making these high production, um, you know, really like crazy lit um, like, uh, settings with uh, with a ton of uh, with a sorry 
brain fart, um, with a ton of uh, assistance and whatnot, uh, a lot of my commercial clients were attracted to the um, kind of the organic nature of, of the documentary look. Sure. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing for commercial work, um, is, is approaching it with more of a story-driven mentality. Um, and, and you've got you've got on your site uh, a sort of a, a section for music as well. I mean, is that uh, is that a personal right. thing, or is it is that a, a, a also in a way a commercial uh, opportunity for you to photograph bands and and music and things like that? Um, I was a musician far before I was a photographer, and so I've been in bands since I was uh, 14, 15 years old. So uh, it's kind of just, I, I kind of have a soft space in my heart for for photographing musicians. Um, it's hard to make a living as a music photographer, yeah. um, because bands simply don't have money anymore, and the ones that do are, you know, by big labels and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I still shoot music every once in a while, kind of just as it, it's almost like my hobby. Yeah, I yeah. Think, I, I figured there was this element of of, of a personal you know uh, initiative on your end to go out and photograph bands and and uh, definitely uh, you know add that to your portfolio. Um, so you know one of the things I, I loved about your 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 work is the the aspect of the street photography and you know tell us a little bit about uh, how and, or rather why you feel so connected to the street what is it that draws you to the street um the chaos it's kind of the same reason why i um why i moved to new york like uh, i i can be a homebody but at a, at a, i very much attracted to the idea of chaos um, and making sense of it um, and you know, the unpredictability of a street scene is just, it's so fascinating to me because anything can happen and anything has happened and anything will happen on the street. And it just takes a really in tune look. Um, and it really makes you focus. Like there's so many things that we take for granted when we walk from A to B, yeah. you know, from A to B, there's a zillion things that happen that are, that are visually interesting and funny and maybe sad. But, you know, especially in New York, we're so in tune with saying, okay, I'm here, I'm going here. Right. That whole process, like, it's, it's purely just a path. It's yeah. not a journey. It's just a <laughs> physical thing that we're going to walk. Right. I hear you. Uh, so, yeah, the unpredictability is cool. And like I said, coming from the wedding world where, um, we're, you know, it's pretty easy to anticipate what's going to happen from, from one minute to the next and from one hour to the next, um, knowing whether whether or not some crazy element was going to enter a street scene, you had no idea. Right. Uh, and so I think shooting street actually has made me a better wedding photographer because I was able to use those elements of, of unpredictability and, and kind of wedge them into how I approach a wedding. That's very interesting. I mean, I think you, you, I, I, get, I get the idea of, 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 you know, especially in New York where you're trying to get from one place to another, your goal is to just move your feet and just jet you know absolutely and and, and, and there's no concept of uh, interacting with people or looking at what the what what's around you as much yeah. um but but i and i and i sense that there is a a strong sense of like a presence uh in in your photography like you're like uh, keenly aware of what's right. around you all the time uh and that's what makes your images so interesting um and I'm looking at your pictures at the moment, and there's so many there. I mean, we could, we could just definitely pick off and, and talk about, but um, we'll have a few selections, uh, you know, underneath this this video interview, cool. um, you know, so that people get a sense of what what I'm talking, what we are both talking about at the moment. Um, right. At what point, though, uh, did you feel drawn to the street? You know, the sense. I get a sense that I mean you've got a you've got an editorial eye for sure. Uh, you've worked for the newspaper, uh, you've and you've worked at weddings, but at the same time, uh, there's, there's certain there's a certain look that's you know, for lack of a better word, there's a certain layering effect that I see right. constantly in your pictures, uh, and right. it's that's no coincidence. I mean that's very sure. very very, uh, uh, you know, it's very well thought out in a way. Um, 
although you didn't manufacture it, I mean, it comes together so beautifully. Uh, I mean, even the first image of, uh, you know, of just the hand entering into the into the frame and the uh, two other elements, you know, just back to back. It's just, just f phenomenal and stunning. Um, wh when did you. you when did you feel that that sort of is the thing to do? Uh, that's a good question. Um, there was actually one definitive moment. Um, I was shooting a wedding in San Francisco um, in 2010. And I had always, I, I, I was more comfortable with shooting with longer lenses. I didn't really know how to work uh, a wide lens because I was uncomfortable with the idea of getting close to people like you know I mean we all like our sense of space sure. um, and so I never wanted to be the the a-hole photographer that encroached on on someone's <laughs> like sense of space right um, but I sh I happened to see a scene happen during a cocktail hour at a wedding in 2010 and um, a, a grandmother was sitting in the middle of, of a very chaotic room I see it and um, and all these things started to happen. I just happened to be standing at the right place at the right time. And I saw it. And for the very first time, I saw this chaos come together in a way that had never made sense before. And I took two frames. I took two frames because I didn't know what to do with this type of, like, with all these elements. I right. took two frames. I kind of forgot about it. And then when I got into Photo Mechanic um, the following week, I remember looking at the image saying, oh, my God, I like, I've... I've never made anything like this before and it was intriguing to me that all these layers like something here and something here and something here and something way back there can all make visual sense. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I mean, like our lives, like everything is about relationships and the beautiful thing about wedding photography, about street photography is, is it's, ex it's exploring the relationship between humans and their environment and humans and other humans. Mm -hmm. And so like, I, 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 that's one thing that I, I am very conscious about in my own work is, um, is exploring that relationship between the physical space and then the humans that are interacting with it. And it's going to take a third party like a photographer to actually see that kind of stuff. Because when we're walking from here to here, we're not able to see all the awesome stuff that's happening around us. Right. Um, and, and I don't know, it's, it's fascinating to me. And it's been a, a huge part of my work for the last five years. And, you know, really just trying to make sense of, a, of an environment and, um, and seeing what happens. Indeed. Um, you have uh, on your site also a section where you, or a blog post I read where you've offered workshops of your own. Right. Uh, is that still uh, happening? Is that something that you're offering uh, in 2015? Um, I am talking with uh, one of my really good friends in uh, in London about offering a class in um, I think Italy um, in June. So that's not officially been announced, but it's something that has been talked about, and I I'm, I imagine that it's gonna it's gonna be announced relatively soon. Excellent. Just going back a little bit uh, to what you were just talking about, which is you know your idea of exploring space and things like that you've you have a website called an unlikely scene which is mm -hmm. and the tagline is exploring chaos which is awesome i love that <laughs> uh, you know as, as a photographer and who's a photographer who's also photographed indian weddings uh mm. indian weddings are all chaos i mean it's, it's the most beautiful it, chaos it, it, is the beautiful, it, is, <laughs> it really is absolutely um you know and i i miss it i miss being in a situation where you don't know what's going to happen next yeah. but you know it is going to happen right. um why did you start this new website, an unlikely scene? What is that? Why is it so important for you? Um, I think it's, especially with like our Facebook wall and our Twitter feed, like we voluntarily choose to follow who we choose to follow. So our circle, you know, it's self-selecting and it's very, it's very insular in a, in a, in a very specific way where it's like, oh, hey, this person that I, that I totally love um, he's posting, he, he just posted something that of course I totally love. And here's another person that did the exact same thing. And it's like this continuing cycle of like, okay, I like that work. I like that work. And I'm familiar with it. And I was starting to think like, oh man, there's so much great work out there that I have, I, that I've never seen. I've never heard of. Um, I want to explore this specific, um, the specific element of, of kind of the, 
unpredictability or, or the unlikeliness. Um, and so I was looking at a lot of other street photographers' work that had that element, and I was noticing like a lot of this could be curated into a really specific gallery that explores just kind of the weirdness of everyday life yeah. because it is it can be really weird but like beautiful in the same way yeah. um and i remember walking down the street in new york and i saw a scene and it just i didn't have my camera on me but i remember thinking well that was unlikely like like all those things to happen at one time I, just watching it i was like yeah that that was an unlikely scene. And then I wrote it down in my, my notebook and I just kind of sat on it for a few months. And then once I started researching other photographers, I was like, yeah, it's, it's an unlikely scene. Like that's what it has to be. Um, I've let it go for the last few months, but um, it's on my list to do over the, uh, in February. Awesome. So you're, you, are you inviting photographers to send you their, their work? And, or is it something that you are curating and saying, hey, I'm inviting you to be on my website kind of thing? It's both. Um, it's both. Um, I've discovered some really, really great photographers um, that have given me submissions. Um, Richard Baker from, from England, he, his work is amazing. He's, he's on there um, as one of my first entries. And it's, it's so, the, the work is so jarring. Um, but again, like I said, it, it's really beautiful. So yeah, uh, there's, um, there's, some, there's some submissions and then I definitely go out and, and curate it myself. Excellent, excellent. Ryan, thanks for uh, allowing me to, to speak with you about your work. Uh, you know, it's, um, it's work that's different. It's work that inspires me. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's tickled my fancy to go out and make <laughs> images. Even though I live in a small suburb, uh, yeah. I feel like there are images out here to be made. Yeah, um, and I think that's what, that's what is instructive of what your work is. I mean, it's that there are images everywhere and it's just a matter of you being a little bit more present and finding those images. You know, I think right. that's that's really what I'm taking away from your work. So thanks for making that ha making this uh, interview happen. I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Take care, bud. Bye. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm.